broadcasting all over the world at urbanbroadcastmedia.com, delivering love and inspiration 24-7. This is UBM Praise. The following show is paid programming and does not necessarily express the views and opinions of Urban Broadcast Media and its subsidiaries. Thank you for listening to UBM Praise. Now, our feature presentation. Ladies, it's Tuesday. Pink Perspectives on the Sir Walter John Show. Right here on UBM Praise. In where we tackle all the hot topics in a believer's walk. A Sir Walter Jones. Who is it? A Sir Walter Jones. Who is his name? A Sir Walter Jones. Who show is this? A Sir Walter Jones. Who is it? A Sir Walter Jones. Hello, 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 everybody out there. This is the Sir Walter Jones Show. This is Sir Walter. And uh, we're here, we're live, and we're full and in effect. <laughs> we're full because I, I had some lunch. <laughs> I've got my. Uh, well, I don't know if, if I want to call a temporary co-host Because, you know, I, when people come in for the first time They usually come in for the second, third, and then forever times oh, oh. So, Sharon, Sharon Ware is in the room here We're excited that she's, she came back after yesterday Bashing that she gave us, me and Alvin She decided to come back and finish finished him <laughs> <laughs> she, <laughs> She's back, and then she brought her husband So, I'm going to have to behave, y'all out there you can hear me say, oh, I'm, I, I'm sorry, and I apologize uh, quite often in the next two hours. Right. I brought him for back. <laughs> it's my back. If y'all know, if y'all know uh, <laughs> her husband, he ain't no joke. Um, listen, today is going to be a very, very, very interesting and hot uh, day because uh, we talked about a subject that uh, is that affects 80% of black women. Yes. As the stats that I've been seeing lately. And it's about obesity. Uh, 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 why are so many of our, our African American sisters overweight? Mm. Uh, and it's a, it's a subject that a lot of them don't want to talk about. No. Okay, no. just don't want to discuss it. No. Like you know what? Uh, leave me alone. Mm-hmm. Okay. And when I put the topic on the Facebook, uh, the interwebs as we call it, um, the responses that I got was so negative. Okay, because the, the the main thing that people were saying, the black women were saying is, why you got to say black women? Why mm-hmm. can't you say all women? A lot of angry. A lot of angry. <laughs> yeah, why you got to say that? Okay, <laughs> so then I had to explain to them, number one, it's an urban radio station. Okay, it is. That's a, right. Yeah. And yes. number one, number two, um, um, we, we, we like to be specific every night on a particular su- subject topic. Okay. All right. All right, so every it's women's night. I'm not gonna say why are all all people fat on women's night, right. <laughs> okay? Uh, and <laughs> number three, uh, I think what happens is uh, when you talk about a, a one man's struggle, he's always offense. He's defensive towards that struggle. Yeah, it's like when you're in church and you hear all the sins preached from the pulpit. When you hear yours preached, you don't say amen. You no, just, you don't. You be quiet. Mm-hmm. But then as soon as they say, and you homosexual, y'all say, hey, man, the <laughs> homosexual is going straight. That's an abomination. They're going straight They're going to going hell. going straight to hell. As soon as you say, uh, <laughs> as soon as you say adultery, well, shh, all right, all right, that's enough, brother. That's enough. Start mean mugging. <laughs> yeah. Mean mugging the pastor. Mean, mean mongering, yeah. And that's what we do. We we do that. Uh, so I got I got attacked, yes, by, by those who 
might have been guilty of the situation we're talking about right now. Now we want to make it, make a disclaimer here that we, we decided to do the show because we want to help the, the our African American sisters live long lives, yes. live long and healthy lives. Okay. That's very important. Um, and, uh, we're going to be very transparent. Uh, we've got uh, some phone callers. They're going to, we got two special guests who are going to call from across the country. Okay. We got one, uh, uh, from Atlanta, Georgia, and we have one from uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, who's going to call. It was she's she's called in now. She's she's, she's on the phone now. And um and so what we're going to do is um we we're going to you know uh, I, I went out there and I polled and found out oh there's some people African American women out there who are into the health industry. Oh, oh yeah, you know, exercise, exercise, and workout daily, and you know and diets and all these things like that. Because I wanted to hear from someone uh who was an authority on that particular subject. OK, and 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 for those who st- might still have some weight on them, but they're working it down. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't want to put all skinny people on the show and say, OK, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There's some people, women who are still who might have been 400 pounds. They're now 200 pounds. Yes. They can, they got a, a story to tell. They can they can help some people out there. Yeah, because that's a health issue. Absolutely. It's not just uh, um just because you want to look gorgeous and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. wonderful and beautiful and yes. all of that. You want to be healthy, be healthy. Yes. And that, that's, that's important. That is very important. Yes. So on the phone here, I think I, I think she's on the phone. Uh, Denisha, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? I, oh, I can. I can now. Uh, how are you? Uh Oh, I, I think I just lost you. Okay. I'm here. Okay. There you go. There you are. All right. I, you know, we need to hear you cause, uh, I don't want to get in trouble. Uh, <laughs> Tanisha Hemfield, <laughs> all the way from South Florida. I'm so excited. I see her Facebook posts a lot. I see how she be, you know, she puts up uh, pictures of her working out and things like that. And I'm just in- inspired by it. You know, I'm almost 50 years old, and I I get upset because I I see how wonderful the shape some of these people out there are, and I, you know, and I I drag around and just because I'm skinny, people say, oh, must be, yeah, you don't have a problem with weight. That don't mean I'm healthy because I'm I'm slim. No, I don't. I'm still not healthy because mm-hmm. I'm I've dragged throughout my day. I'm sluggish mm-hmm. and I'm tired. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just in the same bad shape as someone who might be obese. Mm-hmm. So uh, Hemphill, uh, we need your help. Okay, I I need you to help us here. Tell us tell us your story. Okay, well Hemphill Roll, guys out there, I'm married. Oh, it's roll. Walter. That's right. It's roll. And I'm looking right at it. So you got that little that little dash right there that Yes, they got that there it is. You <laughs> Brother Roll, if you're listening to me, I sorry. Right. Acknowledge. <laughs> I, I sorry. Oh, All right. Yes, wanna add that. Well first of all, thank you so much for allowing me to come on your radio show. I'm super excited to hear everyone that you have coming on to really teach us some things, hopefully, and hear the very various perspectives. But for me, um, I am a mom. I carry three babies, and I have a stepdaughter, so I say I'm a mom of four. Wow. Mm. And never really struggled with my weight, but a lot of moms out there know how it is after you have children, and when you get older, past 35, that metabolism is a little different. Ooh, mm-hmm. Yes. You know, it's so a lot different for me after my last son, I would work out. Um, I was one of those people that never really ate healthy, hmm. but would find myself preparing for an event or getting ready to go somewhere and might want to, you know, tighten things up. Mm-hmm. So I would work out. I might spend, you know, two months super motivated and the next 10 months I wouldn't at all work out. Mm-hmm. So I was one of those people that, you know, didn't really have true incentive to get in the gym and came across a trainer who, you know, really started to explain diet to me and how important it is to really eat healthy because I could work out. Mm -hmm. I would call myself working out just so I could eat whatever I wanted to. But as I got older, I realized that that defeated the purpose and I wasn't really seeing the results that I wanted to see. I, I was holding on to this pouch in the front of my stomach Mm. and so I I said you know what my girlfriend introduced me to this project 10 challenge Mm -hmm. and Mm. I found myself falling in love with a community of people and you guys will that get into um, health and fitness and working out you realize that there is a culture 
yeah. of people that are really serious about fitness. Yeah, um, I lost 15 pounds and um, decided to become committed to this lifestyle change and then took my fitness up a notch and wanted to compete in uh, a fitness competition, nothing that I'd ever wanted to be a part of, but, but just decided to challenge myself. Yeah. Also did a half marathon. For you guys that don't know, a half marathon is 13 miles. Oh. Um, I've never been a runner. I'm one of those lucky <laughs> black women. I can't walk up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'm rocking two sports bras, and I know that there are some listeners out there that understand where I'm coming from. Um, that, you know, that was my struggle, just very busty and, you know, never considered myself a runner. Just that was my excuse, Mm. but, um, managed to get on these two sports bras and and make it happen. And my mother, my sisters, I started seeing a change in my family, all overweight, Mm. Mm. um, grandmother overweight, just, and for those of you guys that are listening, obesity, since that is the topic today. You can look sick and curvy and be obese. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, wow. Um, And for my family, that was a situation. You know, I started seeing my mom developing some pre-diabetic symptoms. And many of us don't really take our health seriously until things go wrong. And what do you think is the cause? What do you... Now, I know that... I've talked with people, women, who are overweight, uh, and I hear them say, I don't eat a whole lot of food. They say, Walter, I eat just like you, because I eat, I eat by, by maybe two meals, two meals a day, okay? They right. say, I may eat two, maybe one meal a day. They say, but I blow up. I get, it's just, so, it, so possibly there's some medical situations going on in some of the some of the women's bodies that's what i was gonna ask like yeah. maybe it's in the genes yeah in 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 the family genes mm-hmm. because you said your your family they were overweight as well and it could be uh down the family line that that uh the weight if you just some people can just look at a meal and gain some yeah. weight so yeah it so could be. right so what do you, what do you say about that denisha Well, you know, everyone's metabolism is different. But one thing that I've learned on this journey is that most of us either overeat or we don't eat enough. Mm. Yeah. And so although someone might say, well, Sir Walter, I I eat the same things you eat. I eat, you know, like you do, and I still gain weight. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of it can be stored fat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so what we don't know is that we really should be eating something every two to three hours. I've heard yeah. that. I've heard. So and you, what that will do is to help your body to burn the fat. I see. Sometimes mm-hmm. I would find myself getting busy throughout the day. I didn't have breakfast, running around with the children. Lunch passed me by, and at 2 o'clock, I find myself feeling hungry. Hmm. Like, mm-hmm. oh, my goodness, I didn't eat all day. Or you feel that light headache mm-hmm. coming on, like a hunger headache. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you haven't eaten all day, and that really is not at all good for your body and it'll cause you to store fat. Your body will go into starvation mode. Yeah. 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 That's true. I've done that before. I, well, I do that all the time. I, I may not eat all uh-huh. day until later that day. And that's true. I've could have stored uh fat because I don't mm-hmm. eat a whole lot. I mm-hmm. nibble and, but I gain weight. Why, but why, I'm, but why, why don't you, you, because of your busy day or my, because you, my busy day, okay. I'm, I'm just busy and mm-hmm. sometimes I'm just, I'm just not hungry. I, see. I don't eat when I, cause I'm not hungry. Gotcha. That's gotcha. W- why I don't eat. Mm-hmm. Well, mm. that's what will cause us to really not at all lose weight. Mm-hmm. It'll cause us to store the fat. So when you, when you feel like you're putting on weight or you can't see any results or, you know, you're wondering why I'm not eating very much, but I'm not losing. That's the reason why. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, is, so we should be snacking. We should be snacking. And yeah. drinking water. And now it's in the, and it's also what we snack though, right? Exactly. It's what you snack on. Okay. Some people can find that they've eaten something that's full of sodium mm-hmm. and they blow up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you're retaining water. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's you know, true. Um, oftentimes we eat things like rice and flour, processed foods, and mm-hmm. you feel bloated in your midsection. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So a lot of foods that we eat, the different rices, breads, beans, it turns into a carbohydrate in your system. Mm. Your body looks at it as a sugar. As a sugar. 
Yeah, yeah. Now, what 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 would be an average day for um, for Denisha Roll? I mean, what what would be your average day, dietary well, wise? Let me tell you guys, I have learned. Again, this has been a journey for me, a true lifestyle change. Um, when I was competing, my average day eating was very strict. Mm. I did no dairy, no sugar mm. n- n- at all, no carbs. So that is extreme. Okay. Um, the average person can't do that. And you guys know, you've heard of people that are vegan or, you know, a lot of um, people are, they have that willpower to eat sprouts and mm-hmm. drink wheatgrass mm-hmm. and juice regularly. Right. The average person doesn't have that willpower. Right. right. So for me, mm-hmm. I found a happy medium, and I was introduced to something called the Project 10 Challenge through Vaisalis. And mm-hmm. with Body by Vi, I'm able to, in the morning, have a protein shake. Mm-hmm. And I use that as my breakfast. Mm-hmm. And because... Running with the children, I can quickly blend something up in the morning, um, and throw it in my shake on the ride to school. I can mm-hmm. have my shake, mm-hmm. and that's also my post workout. I'll go after I drop the kids and work out, and then when I come home, I'll have my egg whites or I'll have something healthy, you know, to fill me up. Hmm. Then I'll have a sensible lunch. Sure. I snack. I'm a huge snacker. Yeah. So I have Vi bites which is something that you can get through the Project 10 Challenge that I'll snack on, and then a healthy, sensible lunch, Mm -hmm. another snack, and then I'll have dinner. So, for example, this evening, I plan on having a salmon salad. Mm. Mm. But you exercise too, right? I do exercise. For me, um, exercising keeps me sane. Okay. I really feel good when I do. And oftentimes people will find when they exercise, they feel better. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Did you decide that you wanted to lose weight for yourself or was it someone else that may have persuaded you to lose weight? Saying, you know, maybe someone saying, um, you gain a little weight. <laughs> you need Did to my lose. Nudge on me? <laughs> <laughs> I You're right. I didn't want to say it, but you said it. Not <laughs> Dr. Rose, <laughs> be out there. <laughs> All right. Well, so, I mean, I, you know, I I like to keep a happy home. So good. for all those listeners that are out there that are married, I mean, true indeed, I want to keep my husband's eyes on me. Yes. I know that's right. I would do okay. the same. Yeah. So when I find myself putting on something and it's not fitting right or I find myself, you know, because we all know it's a personal thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it is. You know, when you look at the mirror, you know what you like to see or you know the way you want your body to feel. Mm-hmm. And truth be told, so many people don't really know how good their body is supposed to feel. Mm. Right. Wow. And, and that's a whole another topic, but, you know, we get depressed. We get mm-hmm. through, you know, we go through things. And, A lot of people are emotional eaters. So for me, I decided that I wanted to do it because I wanted to look a certain way. I wanted to feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was my motivation. Wow. Wow. Um, With the few minutes that we have, I'm going to read something from Facebook. I put this post up uh, on the weekend uh, trying to get someone to come in, uh, somebody who is like yourself. And and, uh, she's uh, my friend. Uh, D- Denisha came in at the eleventh hour uh, <laughs> because it's only it's only a couple of hours ago when she says I, c- I I can call in and I love it. But Stephanie Hill from a uh, f- few days ago was commenting on here and she says I I am five pounds three pints from obese. She said got results in my hand all in black and white. Kansas she lives in Kansas. She says Kansas bores me. My marriage is a constant. She put Z, 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 so that's a, uh, a snore, I guess. Boring. Yeah, she says, I eat. I, I'd rather eat than, and then she put a a blank there, okay, because it's just that bad. She says, I got I got uh, to deal with one of those, I got, well, what is she saying? I got dealt with uh, one of those hands. Oh, either I hold or fold. I'm at the table playing Russian roulette, okay, and it's my spin. What can you do? What can you say, Roll, to to encourage this young lady? Uh, well, 
it sounds like she might be ready for a change. Yeah. Um, Immediately. <laughs> right. So I would say to her, I, from my own experience, I took the Project 10 Challenge, and it has been what changed my life. Yeah. For so many reasons. Um, the first reason is a lot of us need support. Yep. Yeah. She needs support to be mm-hmm. surrounded by a community of people that can cheer her on. Good. That can encourage her. Mm-hmm. That can be there to listen. Yeah. Um, and that is what I found in a community, in the Vaisalis community, which is what um, I'm a promoter of. Yeah. So I would say to her to inbox me. Okay. And I can help her get started. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Does, what do you say? Does Project 10... Mm-hmm. Does that come with a cost? Because it does. Alone, okay. it, um, you know, we all eat, right? Yeah, yeah, we eat. So we're going to spend money on whatever food that we eat. Yep. And all you're going to do is repurpose that. Yeah. So depending on what your goal is, some people want to lose weight. Some people want to get in shape. Mm-hmm. Right. So we can use the Project 10, um, the nutrition of the Project 10 as either a meal replacement or a meal supplement, Mm -hmm. depending on what your goal is. And why I found it to be so effective is because those people that want to lose weight, for every 10 pounds that you lose, you can have 30 meals donated to an obese or at-risk child. Mm. Wow. And that's huge for us because yeah. obesity is not only affecting African American women, mm-hmm. but it's affecting our children. Yes, yes. Well, what do you say to those that that maybe can't afford uh, Project Ten? What could they do? What could those that can't afford to spend the money Good just question. don't have the money? What could they do to mm-hmm. to uh, lose weight? Exercise. I would I would say for those people that can't afford it, you know, oftentimes we think we can't afford it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I look at women, and you guys might be able to relate to this. We will spend on the things that we want to spend mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. That's true. I agree. You know, from hair to nails mm-hmm. to the things that really aren't that important because we don't realize how serious our health is. Right. Yeah. I would say to those people that when you get ready to take yourself serious and realize that you are worth it, that you are valuable, Mm -hmm. that you can make the sacrifice to eat healthy, to really, you know, incorporate some great nutrition into your diet, then that's when you'll do whatever it takes to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. You'll change. And I I think... You know, we men, we we men, we are the same same way. There's some toys I see out there. I when I really want it, I find ways of getting it. For uh, sure. And the yeah. best part about the Project Ten Challenge is that you can get it for free. Wow. And wow. the way that you can get it for free is simply by having three of your friends join you. Hmm. Hmm. So that will take away that excuse. Yeah. Yeah. And and that and that's what we do. We we do. We are a family of excuses. We really are. And, and you're we have right. Thousands of them. Yeah, thousands of them. <laughs> That's true. And and I do believe that there are things that you could do around the house too. Right. Uh, to, to so you, while you're waiting on this product, there's some little exercises you still can do around the house. Right. You know, you don't, sure. Yeah. That's true. That's yeah. True. You don't have sure. to get, get a health club uh, mm-hmm. membership. None like you can do things around the house or outside. Uh, when or you outside. Grocery shopping. Yeah. Park your car away from the grocery store <laughs> right. and walk. Walk. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or even going back and forth to work. Going back and forth to work. Yeah. Yeah. That's, the there yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and when you're sitting in your chair mm-hmm. sit down and lift your legs up and down yeah yeah, yeah. that's good stuff listen um miss mrs roll um we want to get some information from you where can we find you because we're going to put this uh this show up on spreaker.com for everybody to replay this hit the rewind button i want you to send it to all of your friends because we're tired of the excuses okay i have excuses i've been using for years and i'm tired of it too um so uh give us your email the number whatever information you got for us okay so you can reach me on Facebook mm-hmm. at Danisha, it's Danish with an A, Danisha Hemphill, H E M like Mary, P like Paul, H I L L Roll, R O L L E. So Danisha Hemphill Roll on Facebook. I'm D Roll on Twitter. Hmm. I'm D Roll on Instagram. She and my email address is D 
DanishaRoll at gmail.com. Great. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Denisha Roll, everybody. Uh, I, I thank you for your transparency and, and uh, your gift uh, and your information that you've given to so many women. I believe that they will be helped by this information. And uh, they, they got a free of charge. Uh, yes. So <laughs> yes. at my cost, but I'm stuff. paying for this Great show. <laughs> <laughs> so I really appreciate it. We're going to put this up tonight on Spreaker.com, and we're going to tag uh, Denisha Hemphill Roll in it, and you guys go there and hit the replay button and check us out, okay? Denisha, thank you so much. Give my love to the husband and the, and the children. Will do. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a healthy day. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Listen, we're going to play a, a file here, uh, a little segment that I found, I saw on um, the uh, the news webs. I think you guys will recognize the voice, and it's, gonna, it's a panel of uh, women who are going to talk about uh, a article that went on the New York Times about why uh, African American women are obese. Uh, the article said something to the fact that they're obese because they want to be obese. Wow. Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah. 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 And so we'll play this, and we'll go into break, and we'll be right back with Carol Young Walker. This is the Sir Walter Jones Show. There was a raging social media debate earlier this month when novelist Alice Randall wrote this in the New York Times. Too many experts who are involved in the discussion of obesity don't understand something crucial about black women and fat. Many black women are fat because we want to be. Well, a lot of black women blew it up on Facebook and Twitter. Who really wants to be fat was the question a lot of you were asking. But the fact is, African-American women have a higher overweight and obesity rate than their white counterparts. And the science is also clear. Obesity is very dangerous to your health and an increasing number of Americans in the next 30 years are going to be obese. So the question is, is Alice Randall right? Do black women want to be fat? Is it somehow connected to self-esteem? Is it to be attractive to men? We're talking about that today with Michelle Gibson, an aerobics instructor at L.A. Fitness in Capitol Heights, Maryland. Jackie Hood Martin, author and motivational speaker, also a yoga instructor. And Janice Fairby, a founder of Got It Going On, a female empowerment program. Folks, welcome to the show. Uh, Let's go right into it. First of all, who agrees with Alice's statement that black women desire, want to be fat? Anybody? I don't think there's a total agreement with that statement. Absolutely not. I do not agree with it at all. So, so when, when, when someone makes this kind of a comment, puts it in the New York Times, uh, more than a million readers, obviously, uh, you know, again, what's the basis of it? Is this so, sort of like uh, trying to explain away or justify in order to make uh, someone feel good. It sort of reminds me when Monique, uh, when she was talking about, uh, she had this whole comedy tour in terms of uh, yeah, hating yeah. skinny really? women yeah. and yeah. black yeah. women. We're big and be happy about it and feel good about yourself. But then later she realized, look, there are major health issues you got to deal with. Right. I think there's something that we have to recognize that there's a difference between being resolved and being resigned. I think sometimes you can resolve to the fact that I have a medical condition or I live in a food desert and there are things that make me gain weight, stress, inability to cope with things that are going on in your life. And that's when you resolve to make a change and make a difference. But then the other side of that, there are a few women, not all women, who resign to the fact that this is the way I look, this is the way I am, and there's not much that I can do about it. Maybe because I don't have the resources, I don't know who to talk to, I don't have the funding. And so while we're having this dialogue, it's able to stimulate conversation around what can I do, something small every day to make a change. So I don't think that women want to be fat. I think they've run out of options in trying to deal with not maintaining their size. Look, I I get the whole issue of being happy with who you are, Mm -hmm. uh, being content, not being so driven by, by peer pressure. Uh, but when she makes this kind of argument, uh, doesn't it uh, cause problems because somebody then begins to say, okay, fine, I feel great, I'm good, but underlying that, you have significant health issues. Well, as a full-figured woman, um, I know that every hour on the hour is a struggle for me. So the notion of thinking that a black woman wants to be fat is crazy for me. I know I struggle. I've always struggled. At the same time, I had to look in the mirror and come to come to grips with who I am. And and that's the reason why I work out. That's the reason why I teach my classes, because as long as I'm working on myself, I'm, I feel good from the inside out. And I don't, I, 
that's that's how I feel. I feel like as long as you're working, I'm not saying wait until you you're morbidly obese to start working out. But like she said, as a kid, I've always worked out all my life. Mm -hmm. I've done active things. And um, but the notion of thinking that I want to be a fat person is crazy for me. Well, w one of the things that um, that I have also talked about uh, with nutritionists, uh -huh. with health experts, uh -huh. uh, is the whole issue of, of body type as well. Mm -hmm. Body type yes. plays a part in it. Yes. Uh, that if you look at the federal government's BMI standards, mm -hmm. that's really a generic standard that does not take into account body type. Uh, and a lot of fitness instructors pay attention to that because they say, look, dip some people are naturally leaner. Mm -hmm. Some people have, I forgot the, the three different body types there are, right. uh, but that actually exists. And so could that also play a, play a part in, the, in, the, in this whole thinking in terms of how, how black women are viewing themselves? Well, that's what I was saying, you know, when we have to learn about our body types. So mm -hmm. we don't teach that. We take a look at what's in the media. One standard. One that's standard. It. You know, I was a um, model editor for Seventeen Magazine, and knowing that only about 5% of women around the world even naturally fit that means that we've got these girls, you know, trying to squeeze into this one body type. We need to teach our young people about different body types, mm -hmm. different body shapes, and what that means for you. You know, whether you're larger here, mm -hmm. whether, you know, you're going to be, you know, we talk about big boned or, you know, thicker or whatnot, but how that deal, how you deal with that and, and, and what's healthy for that particular body type. All body types can get fat. You know, but we need to learn what we what is beautiful to us, how to take care of that body type, and then be comfortable with that. So really, not being defined by society standards right. of what is beauty uh, in terms of what somebody desires, but realize that at the end of the day, when it comes to how you look, when it comes to your weight, uh, really all of those issues should be secondary to your health. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. A little bit of something is better than a whole lot of nothing. And so when people are looking for opportunities, whether it's um, aerobics, yoga, Zumba, Pilates, any of the related activities, they look at FIT, the F-I-T-T, -T, which is frequency, intensity, mm -hmm. time, and tension. And so it gives the person the um, opportunity to discover how often do I want to work out? Intensity, how long do I work mm -hmm. out? What length of time do mm -hmm. I need to work out? And then moving on into the tension of what level of movement and motion am I static, am I dynamic? And so we talk about this all the time. If I want to give it a few extra steps in, then park your car a little bit further away mm -hmm. when right. you're going shopping. Mm -hmm. Take the stairs right. rather than the elevator. Giving yourselves opportunity to say, I don't know exactly all of what I need to do, but I can do a little bit of something that's relevant for me so that I feel good on the inside. And so your self-image is not wrapped up in what society thinks, but more so about what you mentally believe is right for you. All right. We certainly appreciate it. Michelle, Jackie, Janice, thanks a bunch. Log on to urbanbroadcastmedia.com and check out the many services Urban Broadcast Media provides. Whether it's social media, video production, radio broadcasting, or audio recording, we got you covered. The following show is paid programming and does not necessarily express the views and opinions of Urban Broadcast Media and its subsidiaries. Thank you for listening to UBM Praise. And now, our feature presentation. Ladies, it's Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Pain Perspectives. On the Sir Walter Jones Show, right here on UBM Praise. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Welcome back. This is Sir Walter, the Sir Walter Jones Show. I thank you for coming back, and I'm just excited to uh, have uh, my dear friend, Ro, who just uh, hung up the phone and gave us all that wonderful information about health. And uh, she got rid of some of those excuses. Yeah. About, yes. you know, the things that, you know, because if we want something, <laughs> we'll we, get it. We're going to get it. And that's for <laughs> sure. Enough Cause, cause, you know what I'm saying? Because I turned on the TV and I saw y'all standing in that Black Friday line <laughs> <laughs> at 4 a.m. It wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't I know me. you wasn't out there. I know. <laughs> but they, they got it. And some of them will be paying for those products all the way until next spring, next summer. <laughs> all right. So, but but we put our health on the back burner. Right. But you didn't see me because I was I, online. <laughs> Cyber there Monday. you go. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you, girl. I feel you. Listen, we got another uh, special guest all the way from the good old city of ATL, Atlanta, Georgia. Give woo, a shout woo. out. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> Give a shout out to my son Walter Jr., who lives there, and my brother uh, David Jones lives in Atlanta. I love Atlanta. Love it. Love it. Love it. 
was there uh, this year and visited uh, the Martin Luther King Memorial oh, and wow. went to uh, Ebenezer Baptist Church. And I, oh man, I just oh, had I a know moment. You enjoyed oh, that. my son took me all over the place, and I was crying and weeping. And you know, he said, "Man up, oh, Dad." Sir Walter was weeping. <laughs> I was weeping. I was weeping, <laughs> gnashing of teeth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. So I love Atlanta, and um, <laughs> so we want to uh, welcome my, my my other good friend, who I've known for many many years. Uh, Carol uh, Younger, are you on the phone, Carol? I am on the phone. Yes, yes. Oh, she sounds excited. She I am excited. on the phone. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm ready to go. The Lord is moving. Oh my goodness, she's ready to rock and roll. <laughs> hey, Carol, uh, you from Chicago originally, right? Originally from Chicago, born and raised. Born and raised. Now, what church, church did you attend in Chicago? St. John Church of God in Christ That's, is where I grew up in that church. And then as uh, a teenager, a late teen, I joined uh, Pastor Campbell's church. Oh, Willie yeah. James Campbell. Willie James Campbell. Okay. Yeah. This yeah. Bench, that's right. When you, that's when they were on Roosevelt, right? Yes. Okay. I used to come there a lot. Uh, you know, that was the place you go. When your church ended, you went over there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. It was you a went, party over there. Yeah. Sunday nights, <laughs> man. Matter of fact, that's when I first met the Winans for the first time. Uh, Marvin Carvin and and um, who, who else is there? Who's there? I missed two other brothers, uh, and Ronald right and Michael. Uh, that's because that, Willie James Campbell used to bring. He brought the wine into Chicago oh, wow. for the first mm-hmm. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it became a yearly thing. Um, but now you moved to Atlanta uh, after that. Um, you settled down and all those wonderful things. But I see you once a year at the Wild Conventions here in Chicago. Yeah. Okay, the women of worship uh, with uh, women of wisdom ministry. W- that's right. W- w- yeah, because there is a women of worship. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's mm-hmm. that's our Caucasian friends. Um, and uh, that's with Carol Lumpkin. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. Who was also from St. John, I believe, as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And now then you you got involved in this whole health thing. Now, tell me why did you do that? Well, my husband is a health care executive, so I have moved around um, to several different cities, the last one being in Las Vegas. Mm. And we were in Las Vegas for um, 10 years. And while being in Las Vegas, I was an executive myself, and I was a workaholic. My husband was a workaholic, but due to the relocation, I didn't have employment, so I had a lot of time on my hands. Okay. And I can empathize with your caller from Kansas because I was in a similar situation as she was. Wow. You know, you're in a new environment. You don't have anyone around. You don't have that support system. You don't really know where anything is at. And I'm trying to figure out what am I going to do with my day. Yeah. So it just came to me as I started looking around at the whole environment of Las Vegas. We Everybody know everyone in Las Vegas is pretty. Right. Pretty, they're slim. Yeah. They're healthy. <laughs> right, right. Which had, uh, that was not my a part of my culture and a part of the network that I was in. So for me, it was a matter of a cosmetic decision at that particular time when I got started. I figured, hey, I have a husband. I have to make sure that he's looking at me and he's <laughs> you had to not keep looking up. at some of these hot days with these fine bodies. Wow. So mm-hmm. I wanted a piece of that, and that's how I got started. Wow. wow. And and then once once you bit that bug, you, you you it was hard to pull away from it. Oh, it was extremely hard for me to pull away because I really enjoyed it. I liked how my body looked. I liked mm-hmm. how I felt. I had more energy. Mm-hmm. I had more endurance. My body was nice and toned, mm-hmm. and I just became engulfed in it. And for me, I was so involved in it until I had to pull away mentally from it because. I uh, found myself almost being one of those neurotic people mm-hmm. towards exercise. Mm. Mm. So wow. there's a happy medium. You may you may find yourself on one end of the spectrum or, or the other. I don't work out or work out a whole lot. I mm. see. And then the Lord has to give you the balance somewhere in the middle because you can be on one end or the other. That is true. Mm-hmm. Now, Sharon, someone's going to ask Carol this question, okay? They're going to say, You've never been obese, all right? Yes. There's somebody who's that right now, three hundred pounds, okay? Mm-hmm. And they're listening. And says, listen, these these little skinny women, they they never been where I am. Right. There's a struggle, mm-hmm. okay? Yeah. 
what can they how could they possibly tell me you know well, you know or express how i'm feeling right now carol how how are you able to uh respond to that well you know i i do hear that a lot and i think that you hear that from people who have uh, an issue of fear and not want to put in all of the hard work and dedication that goes along with it. Yeah. But I also think about other people in different industries. Do you think someone wants to listen to uh, Google uh, Mark Zuckerberg and figure out how to run a business? He's the expert. He right. did it. He, know it. he knows what it's going to take. Mm-hmm. So you may, someone may say, oh, he had a silver spoon in his mouth. Some may not. But if you can go to an expert, someone who knows what it takes to get to where you need to be, yeah. and the, uh, and the myth, the myth is, is that because I'm small, I don't have my struggles. Right. I want to eat comfort food like anybody else. Yeah. I don't want to exercise sometimes like anybody else. Mm-hmm. But I have to pick up my feet and do the necessary work. So, yeah, I may have not been a size as my sister that's next to me, but I still have the same struggles as my sister. And you can look at my track record to see how I overcame some of the issues that you are dealing with because the struggle is the same. Yeah. It's wow. just that I know how to counterbalance some of those things so that I won't have the sore fat in my body. Hmm. Hmm. Go ahead. You got something? Uh, no, I was, yeah. I was just, just a- yeah. agreeing. I was I, I was agreeing with you yeah. that, you, yes, uh, skinny skinny women have struggles they yeah. have struggles with eating sure yes. anorexic yes. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, they they do i mean going to the bathroom and uh-huh. you know and doing bomb, their yeah. thing so they so they won't uh-huh. be uh big because they have a, a issue with that they don't want to be big but, yeah. you know so it is it's hard on both sides yeah. it's, it's not just yeah. uh, uh um on the the bigger woman uh-huh. Or the voluptuous woman. Sure. I say voluptuous. The voluptuous. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, you are so right when you say when you bring up the issue of being anorexic because mm-hmm. that's where I had to uh, pull back because I found myself having anorexic type thoughts. Mm. Because yeah. if you work out to the extreme, you're becoming obsessed in your mind, and that next extreme is being someone who's anorexic. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Oh, and so, no. and even, you know, I like being transparent. We just came out of the Thanksgiving holiday. Mm-hmm. And so I ate a lot of the food that I wanted to eat just like anybody else. There were a lot of different things that I ate that I know that I shouldn't have to have eating. Mm-hmm. But guess what? I knew how to pick up the pieces and start all over again. Right. So, I mean, the struggle is the same. It's just a matter of do you want to do the work? Yeah, mm. that's true. Do that's, you want to do the work? so true. That's so true. So, so the, 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 the <laughs> problem here okay is the eating thing okay we we uh carol we have a a palate we have taste buds that desire certain foods okay all right now i'm a coke drinker i love to drink coke Mm -hmm. and i'm and i've been trying to kind of back up from that so lately i've been trying to get myself to drink a lot of water in Mm -hmm. place of coke okay and so it went from a coke one coke a night till maybe three cokes a week Mm-hmm. you know till to, mm-hmm. to to two a week mm-hmm. so i'm trying to i'm trying to do that but but Very then good. but there, there there are other uh food items that i like that i know that's not good for me mm-hmm. okay and it's hard for me to pull away from it are there some foods or drinks out there that can can replace the unhealthy ones but still have that good taste Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. But however, in the beginning, it's not going to have a good taste. For you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because okay. your palate has been trained to a certain texture yeah. uh, of food, certain ingredients in that kind of food. Yeah. And when you eat healthy, you're not going to find a lot of that because when you have poor nutrition, the foods that we tend to gravitate to are fat, yeah. salt, and sugar. Lots of fat. Once you, lots of fat, <laughs> lots of sugar. That's the reason yeah. why we have the highest rate of uh, blood pressure yeah. because of all of this sugar, uh, mm-hmm. salt. But what you will find that initially you will not have the palate for anything healthy because it just tastes totally different. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you have to allow at least 30 days for your palate to change. And you have to make a conscious decision where you may say, I know that I may not like this type of food, Mm -hmm. but this is the type of food that I need in order to become healthy. So I'm just going to have to go through that transitional process Mm -hmm. in order to get there. 
Now, one of the things that we love is the uh, white rice. Sure. Mm. That's my, that's my killer. Rice. Yeah. Love it, white rice. It is so unhealthy for us because the amount of salt we put in it and the amount of starch mm-hmm. that's in it. Yeah. A healthy substitute for that would be your white wow. rice or another dish that's even better that's called quinoa. But the, the strategy is is that you have to use low sodium low sodium chicken broth in order to try to make it a little bit better on the palate, mm-hmm. but it's still going to be different because the texture is totally different. Yeah. Now, one of the things that you mentioned, uh, Walter Walter, was about the uh, Coca Cola. Coca Cola has so much sugar in it. Mm. Yeah, and sugar Tons. is the new cancer in the black community. Yeah, mm-hmm. we have these supersized drinks with all of this sugar in it. And the uh, I was reading a report from the uh, mayor of New York City, and he actually tried to put a ban on sugary drinks. Because of low-income communities was drinking so much of these sugary drinks, they, they were starting to see a high incidence of obesity in those communities from these sugary drinks. Right. Mm-hmm. So you just have to drink your water. There's absolutely no way of getting around the water. Sure. What you can do is put you some lemons in it, put you some limes in it, or put something like that in it, and then it will kind of help with the taste, mm-hmm. and it'll also quench your appetite. Yeah. What about um, um, non-sweeteners? You know, a lot of uh, uh, people substitute that True. for the sweet. Right. Is that good or bad for you? The, the non-sweeteners are not really good because mm-hmm. they have a lot of artificial products in it that's not good for the body and it ends up being another sugary drink. Yeah. But they say that it's not as bad as the white sugar, but it's still not good for the body. Right. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's one of those things where we're just going to have to bite the bullet and say, you know what, I need to get away from this. And some of the waters out there that have uh, different things added to them, mm-hmm. which think they're good, they're but nice. they're not actually good. When you have learned how to read the different ingredients that's involved with a lot of those products, they have their high fructose corn syrup in it, and it's totally bad for your body. That's an obesity attack waiting to happen when you have all of these added ingredients into your water. You need it to be something natural. Wow. Yeah. Wow. The um, <clears throat> Facebook is chiming in. There's a lot of um, this is uh, today's post and plus a couple of days post as well. So there's a lot of comments coming coming in. I'm looking at a comment from uh, Fit Nick. That's F I T T N I C C. Fit Nick, um, which is another Facebook friend of mine, and I think Carol might have seen this one from the, the weekend. Uh, and Fit Nick says, "Mindset: Some women will choose to continue, and some will be influenced to change. Everybody will not agree, but I would hope." We could encourage our community on the benefits of being healthy. Mm. She says, I, uh, um, I don't promote skinny. I promote health first. Yeah. And the weight will follow. I have to place uh, a psychologist and trainer ma- uh, majority of the time because it's sometimes deeper than the outward effect of harm done to the heart of a woman, to the heart of a woman. Uh, so there's a there's a so being obese will affect the heart, huh, Carol? Oh, absolutely. Obesity affects the heart, and and it'll give you uh, breast cancer. It affects the heart because uh, I I can probably guess that you know at least three to four people within your circle of family, friends, or your relationships who have high blood pressure. Mm. So when you have high blood pressure, that's affecting your heart because it's making your heart work, work much stronger than it's meant to work. So mm. that definitely is a uh, uh, a factor. Wow, wow, mm. that's um... when you mention the mindset. Um, it all starts in the mind first. I always tell people. You have to get your mind together first. Mm-hmm. You can put whatever systems in place that you want to put in place, but if you have not dealt with the issues that's bombarding your mind, the fear, the stress, the belief that I can't do this, I've tried all the different diets out there, nothing ever works for me, you have to let some of that go, and you have to discover what are the triggers that's causing you to eat. Are you an emo- emotional eater? Mm. When we look back as a, at our history as a culture, we always rewarded ourselves with food. Mm. Yes, we, we rewarded ourselves with food when we were happy, 
with this and family gatherings, mm-hmm. and we reward ourselves with food when we're sad. Mm. So things are not going right when we're in stressful environments. But you have to find out what it is that's triggering you and triggering your mind. What are you dealing with up there in order to force you to have these unhealthy habits? Once you discover what that is, then you can find ways to avoid being in those stressful environments. But it all starts in the mind. Wow. Yeah. Oh, all, yes. The good. mind is so powerful. <laughs> it all starts in the mind. Listen, if you just tuned in, this is the Sir Walter Jones Show, and we're talking about health um, as on the specifics of obesity and overweight black women of America. And the stats are alarming. It's shocking. Uh, it's disheartening. It is discouraging to see that that uh, the, the stats that I've been reading on on, on the on the internet is like saying saying eighty percent of uh, African American women are obese. Uh, now, sometimes we can look at a woman uh, and say she she don't she don't look all that fat. Mm-hmm. But I think that, that apparently there's a scale that tells you. If you're obese, but it's not our skin, but it's, it's not, not our African American. It's not women. exactly, exactly. And Carol, I, I look at I look at these gospel shows on on TV. I was watching the BET uh, Gospel Awards, last, Stellar Awards last last year or this 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 past one, mm-hmm. and I saw the performances from all of the 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 artists on there, and eighty maybe ninety percent of them were huge. They were absolutely large. And and I think this is the look that the average American, both black and white or Asian, they see the black church and they say fat uh, uh, singer. Mm-hmm. And when you look at, let's see, the, the, that show called the, the, the um, what's that? The Wayans boys back in the 90s had that, that show, Something living Color. Living, and living, and living, living color. color, okay? Yeah. Every time they did a church scene with a singer, it was always a very fat black woman. Okay, because that is the that is what the the all races look and see when they want to mock us. Mm -hmm. They bring this big woman out. So Joe Hill says here, being the agitator, he says that he is. (laughs) <laughs> he, ain't, he is a natural he is, yes and he says and since Sir Walter tagged me and since I already feel like a target this week he says I will try this out he says questions he says how does being morbidly obese affect your Christian witness how do you respond to a large preacher versus a BMI correct preacher does I get what's being my body, body mass? Body mass. Okay, yeah. so yeah, uh huh. So it says, does it make a difference? Why or why not? And what percentage of women be uh women become large only after getting their man? Wh- which yeah mm. yeah. I mean, this, I see that pattern. Um, not so Sharon. much about after they uh-huh. more like after they have uh, man have left them or sure. they've separated uh-huh. you see right. it sometime the emotional at that, eating in the stress uh-huh. Uh-huh. yeah that's uh-huh. when the stress comes mm-hmm. on yeah. not mm-hmm. so much when they're there because a lot of times um we trying to keep off the weight right for our for man. man so okay what well, but i think Usually what you find though is when people get Chabot. married Chabot. that they gain a lot of weight because mm-hmm. they're not as mobile and it's not as active as they were in their single life yeah. Uh, we have a big problem of coming home, doing the chores at the house, sitting down and doing this mindless eating in front of the television set mm-hmm. and not being as active. And we have different reasons why we can't exercise rather than looking at your week, figuring out how can I make time for exercise in my week. Mm-hmm. And perhaps we were doing this before we have gotten there, but now our lives are so busy and so compacted that mm-hmm. it has become a norm that when you get married over time, you just gain a lot of weight. Yeah, yeah, that that's true. Now, uh, my my, my uh, uh, producer here asked a question about childbearing years. Okay, uh, a woman dropped that baby, but she don't drop that fat. That's not all women. No, I'm not saying all women. I'm saying that, that there's a lot of them out there yes. who they got baby fat. Yeah. What what can what can she do? I mean, what is it that she, is it is it is it the baby that did it? Is it the food that she was eating while she was pregnant? And what can she do to counteract that? Well, um, yeah. there's a lot of things that's going on there because once you have a child, your your day is so busy. Mm-hmm. If that is exercising is not a part of who you are, it becomes even harder once you have your baby, you're mm-hmm. working and all of the obligations. It becomes extremely difficult. 
in those cases, I say if you find where you just can't uh, exercise, mm -hmm. then you need to change what you're eating and how you're eating to speed up your metabolism. Because a lot of times our metabolism ends up slowing down, so we have to figure out a strategy to increase our uh, metabolism. Mm -hmm. What I found interesting when I lived in Las Vegas, I would see a lot of pregnant women at the health club. Mm -hmm. I wow. have never saw a African American <laughs> pregnant woman at the health club. I was about it doesn't to ask mean you that, that it doesn't exist. Right. I'm just speaking in my realm of influence. I've never seen that, but I would see white women at the health club all the time, and they would be, some of them would be even eight months pregnant. Wow. So, I mean, getting off of that fat is a long process, long, and it yeah. takes a whole lot of work, but it can be done. Yeah. On my uh, website, and I'll give you guys that information a little bit later, sure. uh, I give you some tips on a meal plan, and I give you a grocery list. I have uh, recipes on there. I have instructional videos all under the line of nutrition. Mm. So you can see how I put all of that together and how all of that will work for you. But if you're pregnant, uh, if you have that, um, that weight that from your pregnancy, yes, you can lose it, but it's going to be a hard journey. Yeah. And in those cases, you may need to find a trainer to help you to overcome some of these issues. Yeah, right. yeah. And you're right. I've seen, I've, I've watched television. I've seen the the woman, uh, uh, un, unfortunately, all Caucasian, with the baby at the health club, mm -hmm. okay, in the stroller, and she's working out, trying to get rid of all the things that that baby did to her. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Natalie Bullock on Facebook says, food question. She says, is butter bad for you or is margarine worse? I think I, I would have to get back on there. If my memory okay. serves me correctly, uh, margarine is better than butter. No, I'm sorry. Butter is better than the margarine. Oh, right. Really? But I would have to research that. But I do have information on that on my website. Yeah. I thought that uh, butter was like uh, shortening. In a sense, but no. Well, I'm, I'm not. I'm. Kinda I don't think she's saying that. I, they margarine. both might be bad, but I think right. the right. question was which one is worse. And uh, oh, uh, she's saying butter is worse than you, margarine. Yeah, well, because Mar Mar Darlene Miller saying here margarine is worse for you. Oh. And then Avis Nana is saying, I know you're not. She's. I know you're not asking me, but she says, but butter is more <laughs> natural than margarine. Mm -hmm. okay. Margarine Correct. has has man made ingredients. Oh wow. Yeah. That is True, but mm -hmm. I would have to go back to, on my website and research the information on that to tell mm -hmm. you for sure. But what we should be using is uh, a lot of olive oil because yeah. the olive oil is even better. Sure, yeah, yeah. sure, that's yeah. true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I've but heard. then that also gets back into your taste buds and what you're used to. But the olive oil is the better one to use. And I do have a lot of the different oils on there and tell you which ones you should be using. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Now we like soul food, Sharon. Oh, we love okay. soul food, chitlins okay. and we, wings. We, we we love it all. Okay, <laughs> and it's it's again it's it's hard for us now. That, now going back to the church, all right. Every time we want to celebrate, that's when we cater to the soul food restaurants yes. and we bring them in to, even mm -hmm. to our church and we sell these dinners at church okay mm -hmm. or we cook them. or we cook yes yes <laughs> Mainly so we so so food so food so food so food mm -hmm. okay and then lately we've been noticing that soul food has not been good for us down through the years yes. our parents yeah. have been dying from cancer and and, mm -hmm. and blood issues and what have you okay heart disease and all this is stemmed from our dietary uh, the, the the whole soul food situation yes. okay but are there any soul foods out there that we can eat or is it is it is it all about moderation without killing ourselves portion control is a a big factor some people don't want to go all the way and eat clean where you're eating all of your um uh, raw products, I mean, you're cooking them, but they're uh, from nature, from the ground. When you do a lot of the, the clean, uh, clean eating with your whole grains and that kind of thing, your fruits and your vegetables, um, it, it is a process. So I would say if to start out, because it's going to be a, a long journey, you can have some soul food, but you it must exercise portion control. And you want your vegetables to be the largest part of your dinner plate. When is the, your vegetables are the largest part of your dinner plate mm -hmm. and the thing that you go to more often than the other things on your plate, you'll find yourself getting full um, faster 
yeah. and it won't have the room or the desire for some of the other things that's on your plate. Wow. So I would say, yeah, you can have it, but it, it's still not as healthy as just going clean all on your own. Another thing I want to say is that uh, I think that we need to detox. I yeah. took a detox at the beginning of the year, and people usually only talk about it at the beginning of the year, but you probably need to do it a couple times a, uh, a year. Hmm. Because we are obese and we want to get over this, we have to clean our palate, as I talked about earlier. When you go on a detox, it helps you to do that because you get away from some of your sugars, your salts, and your fat. Hmm. And a detox is excellent in doing that. I did one called um, Essence of Vitality. And when I tell you that it doesn't taste well, it doesn't taste well. But <laughs> what you will find is that when you're doing this detox, you will lose about 10 pounds in two weeks because it's you're cleaning the toxin out, the toxins out of your body. You're not eating a lot of red meat. You're eating a lot of fruits and vegetables and fish. You're eating a lot of lean protein while you're doing this detox. And once you come off of it, you will find that you don't even have a desire for the things that you were eating prior to. Okay, let's talk about this after the break. I love that. That detox subject yeah, is very important. I want to hear more about more that. More about that, yes. Uh, we're going to do a little, little music, kind of break the ice here so I can uh, get some on my tea so I can detox and <laughs> right. come back. Okay, <laughs> we're talking with Carol Young Walker, our dear from Atlanta. We're going to take a break. This is just a Walter Jones show. Broadcasting all over the world at urbanbroadcastmedia.com. Delivering love and inspiration 24-7. This is UBM Praise. The following show is paid program and does not necessarily express the views and opinions of Urban Broadcast Media and its subsidiaries. Thank you for listening to UBM Praise. Pressures of life seems to weigh you down. And you don't know which way to turn. God is concerned. And he's working it out for you. The child that's on cocaine. Through prayer he can change. That marriage. That's on the verge of breaking up. Although sometimes you have to walk alone. Now you ask yourself. Is there a word from the Lord or oh, from the Lord? You need a blessing and you need it right away. God is concerned and he's working it.
On the Sir Walter Charm Show, right here on UBM Praise. Go ahead, Sharon. That's my son, Walter Jr. Playing the hits. He's jamming on the one. Jamming on the one. Jamming on the one. <laughs> b- 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 baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walter Jr. Um, I tell you, we were on the break, uh, and I wish you guys could sometimes hear what we'd be talking about during break, because sometimes that's the most hottest stuff that should be on the, yes. on the air. That's why I'm glad Oprah did she started doing the uh, backstage shows mm-hmm. stuff that, that you know you don't talk about on the air. Let us see what's really yeah, going on. Yeah, what's 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 really going on? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, uh, but but uh, uh, Sharon uh, and uh, Kara, you still there? Yes, and I want to address a couple of things I see on Facebook when we. When we okay. get there, okay, yeah. Well, Bob, I want to. I also, I want to say here because I want to. I want you to address that and then go back to that detox thing. Is that um, um, Tyler Perry, Sharon, okay, okay, and Carol? Tyler Perry has made millions of dollars off of this one character, mm. okay, Mud Deer. Yes. All right. Yeah. The 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 portrait of Mud Deer is the portrait that the average American sees in. A, a a trusted woman, mm, yeah. somebody in the family who we all go to mm-hmm. for food, mm-hmm. okay, for wise wisdom. Yeah. When you go back to the the that show that that movie called Gone with the Wind, mm-hmm. you see my, my, what was her name? She won an Oscar for that it role. Was her name Big Mama? No, it her wasn't Big Mama. Big Mama. It was it was it was, it was Mammy. Mama. It was Mammy. I think in in the in the movie, her name was Mammy something. It may have been Mammy. Okay. Hattie Davis. Yeah, Hattie. That's oh, right. Yeah, McDaniel. Hattie. McDaniel, I think it's called. Yeah, McDaniel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That is the picture mm-hmm. of the black woman that one lead role in our homes. Yeah, with the aunt your mama. With the aunt your mama. Okay, <laughs> on the pancake on back. Okay, it's yeah. a big. Heavy woman, Thomas. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. On 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 Tom and Jerry. Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. Thomas. And she. You never saw her face. Jasmine. You saw them ankles. Well, you saw them big ankles. I think they showed her face. Huh? One Knees time. and ankles. Oh, no, they showed oh, her rear end. They showed oh, yeah, her rear end. They always show her rear end. Okay. Rear when she fell out the house and it yes. blew up. Mm-hmm. No, they showed the back of her head. Yeah. That's what it is. That's the, the image head. of the. Yeah. Really, really That's it. Yes, sir. <laughs> That is the image of that we see here, okay? Mammy image. Uh, uh, yeah, what do you say? The mammy image. image. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that uh, history has repeated itself. We have not come out of that mentality, okay? It was or oh, everybody got a mud deer in their family, yes. all right? Or big mama. Or big mama, okay? Mm-hmm. Look at La- Martin Lawrence. He oh, did. Yeah. He did big mama movies, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. It, it's every time they dress up in a woman, it's always a big woman, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so this a big black woman, a big black woman, okay? <laughs> So that oh, no. that has been glamour uh, glorified in our families. Well, yes. let me let me mm-hmm. offer some backdrop. Yeah, it's what European men love to see. Yeah, they do. That's true. When we were in Italy, they, the many times I've been over there playing, the single thin women mm-hmm. were jealous for the first time and only times in their lives. Right. Whenever we would go over there performing. Wow. Because those European men were coming out of the voluptuous women. Yep. 
Yeah. yeah. They yes. were coming after the thickness. They that's yeah. what they like. They like that. They like the curves uh-huh. and the grooves that they can find and get yeah. lost in, in the big black women. <laughs> that's true. And that that's what the whole Sarah Bartman situation was all about too. The, the not just the big fat woman, but the her behind. Yes. They go they went after that and they paraded her around town and just a tragic story. Mm. Uh um But we even see that on today in our society today that being uh overweight or obese is cultural acceptable. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you hear people saying that, you know, I don't want any skins and bones. I want some meat. I want some big hips. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if you look at what it's doing to our women with the diabetes, the high blood pressure, mm-hmm. and all of these other uh, ailments, the, the breast cancer, you know, which one is really a priority to you to see some big hips or to have mm-hmm. a healthy and whole woman? Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. You want to respond to someone on Facebook? Yes, Joe Hill. I wanted to go back to that question that he had posed on here about um, a morbidly obese uh, Christian and does that affect your witness. I really believe that it should not affect your witness Uh because uh, the message is still the same and they have the anointing on their light if they're big or small. Mm -hmm. Everyone has their own struggle. And yeah. maybe that's just an area of their life where they have struggle in the demon or something that they need to address on their own. But they still have the ability to go out there and witness and make an impact in the kingdom of God. So I don't think that we should play judge or jury as to someone's size, but we should be accountable to ourselves. Mm-hmm. Now, we can go out and encourage that person to live a healthy lifestyle and give them some strategies to overcome their issues. But as a whole, I don't think that it should affect whether or not we want to listen to the message that God has given them to deliver. Sure, that sure. is so true. Yeah. Uh, um, if 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 the man of God is bringing the word to me, that's mm-hmm. all I'm interested in. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. care about uh, how big he is or how small he is. I care mm-hmm. about him bringing the word and that he is anointed mm-hmm. when he brings it. That's all sure, that matters sure. to me. Now, somebody, somebody on my left here. Is disagreeing with you. I was about to say. I, okay, and there's number two. There's You're the right. two people. Okay, now I want I want Cedric Ware yes. to uh, have an expression here. I mean, you know, basically people, you know, I hate to say it, they judge you by your appearance. Sure, definitely. So you do have to pretty much, especially if you're in ministry. And you are sizable. Exactly. <laughs> you have to be mindful of your weight. Well, yeah, yeah. You so have to be if, that much better. Well, yeah. If it's a, if it's a, if it's a struggle, we don't we don't know it's a struggle. So sometimes some people do judge a man's weight. Yeah. Now, I will say a preacher coming to me and telling me about my uh, over drinking, saying that you need to kick that habit, but yet he's got a problem with overeating. Right. It's hard for him to give me a resolve on me overindulging on a habit. That's true. Okay. So people will look at his witness and say, I he, I can't listen to him. You know, but but in wow. general, what you were saying, Sharon, because people, you know, no matter what what we preach, somebody's going to be against you. Yeah, it doesn't matter. No, Whether no, you big, small, maybe that's true. They're going to judge you. Nobody, yeah. no matter truth. what. Nobody likes the right. truth. Nobody. Nobody likes the truth. Yeah, yeah. So if 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 if, if a preacher is coming and he's telling me the truth, he's giving yeah. me the unadulterated word. Right, right. I'm listening because. Mm-hmm. I believe I'm a believer sure. and I'm feeling, you know, what he's saying. He's anointed. I'm not looking at it at his outer shell. I'm right. looking at I'm looking at his soul. I'm looking at, at, at the word of God. I'm looking at God. Yeah. And you're trying to get fine. You're trying to get that that's good in him. And you're trying to benefit from that, which is the exactly. word of God. Exactly. Yeah. And he has his own struggle. That's yeah. Right. And that, that, that is true. And I, I might have my own struggle yeah. listening to him. Right. So, so, you <laughs> so know what? I, I Come on now. I agree uh-huh. with one of the panel has just said that they will, that person will be more effective if they were healthy. Yeah. Right. Correct. If they were Correct. not obese, you will have a larger appeal. I have a friend who told me once before, if someone was obese, that they couldn't respect that person. Wow. And they, they made the correlation to when you look at uh, the presidential uh, candidate, like your, your Chris Christie, mm-hmm. someone was saying that he will never get selected because he's obese. So there is uh, some truth in you're right. the amount of respect that you get right. if you're uh, a, a normal weight size or a mm-hmm. healthy weight versus being someone who's obese. I mean, that's just the way the societal norm and how they look at our leaders. 
But I still believe that as a Christian, we are not the ones to play judge in that area. We should support and help that person. That's I agree. Right. I, I agree. Because if you look at all of the, what do we have, 44 presidents? Is it 44? Uh, yes. Yeah. 44. Okay. If you look at them, uh, only a couple of them were very were obese. Okay, yeah. if you look back, yes, uh, and yeah, and and none of them in the in the this twentieth century in the twentieth century from nineteen hundred no. on were in the were age of photography. Well, wait, and, and oh, wait. the way we politicize our yeah. campaign now. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. even the ones that were obese or looked yeah. the way they did, they yeah. wouldn't have gotten in. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have gotten in. Yeah. They got to be model. Uh -huh. it, it's a certain <laughs> look they pick. It's, it's a, a certain look. thing. Even though yeah. uh, a certain uh, image. there's a mm -hmm. certain image right. they want to project mm -hmm. to win because they appeal to a certain demographic. So yes. you're going to get this amount, this demographic, mm -hmm. because the look alone does it. Yes, yes. And that just, just didn't happen in America, but it happened all the way back in biblical days. Look at, look at Saul, uh, Saul, King Saul. How the, how the Bible expressed how goodly he looks. Mm -hmm. Okay, he, you know, and and there was something about beauty all the way from the dawns of time. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, and still today we are America is full of this whole thing about beauty, Rich. and and each every ten years seem like beauty is different though. It's redefined. It's redefined. Or, yes, or re reissued. Yes, yes, because yes. 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 now the skinny, the skinny slim, jeans, yes. looking like a stick woman. Is in now, mm -hmm. and they even I'm scared of them. Oh, yeah, even yeah, on the too. magazine covers, they're photoshopping it to make them look like pencils. And the smaller they are, the more attractive. But not at one me. point, they uh -huh. were out. You're right, just like the light skin and the dark. You're skin. right. You're right. It's like a vicious cycle. I said just switch. <laughs> just keep on coming but, but, down yeah. and around but and around. What is appealing in terms of weight is based on your culture, because yeah, not right. all black men would say that those thin women in magazines are appealing to them. True. Exactly. So it just kind of depends okay. on where you fall in your preference with that. Something I definitely want to go back to uh, is the topic of whether butter or margarine is better for you. Mm -hmm. And margarine is definitely better for you because it's made from vegetable I, oil. Vegetable oil. Butter is not good for you because it's made from I animal fat and it contains high levels of cholesterol mm -hmm. and high levels of saturated fat, which yeah. is bad for your heart health. Yeah. You knew that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I said margarine was better for yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, what vegetable got oil in it? What vegetable got oil? Beside in? olives. Beside olives. Uh, I ain't uh, seen no potato oil. I ain't seen no cranberry oil. Cranberry. I ain't seen cabbage no oil. cabbage oil. <laughs> I ain't seen no uh, vegetable make no oil. Uh, now I'm serious. I, I me sounds I may sound silly, but I have yet to see it. Have you squeezed the vegetable to the point where it produces oil? Juice, maybe. Mm -hmm. Oil, no. Cabbage. I trust God over chemist. Give me the butter. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a butter. Give me butter. <laughs> yeah. but, I'd take butter any day. <laughs> oh, well, God. I, well, we now, use, olive oil, that's different. Well, we uh, use margarine in our home. Not no, butter. we don't. Yes, we do. Margarine. I'll buy it. Well, you don't so know what. Know. Just as long as it's on the plate. Man. <laughs> Come on. I know I'm a big man too. I don't care what she put in it. I just want it on the plate. Uh, you know, I, you know. Speaking of big man, you know, I, I haven't forget what you said on, on the show last. I ain't scared of you, bro. Calling me big Turn teddy, the video bear. On. big teddy bear. Excuse me, uh, teddy radio. Bear. Excuse me, radio audience. This is said the bishop, <laughs> not said the teddy bear. Please. Said the big ship. <laughs> Yeah, Let's crazy. get this straight right now on the radio. Yes. Said the bishop. Said it right. straight, man. Willie Said Harmon going to come for his Willie, name. Willie Harmon. <laughs> go ahead, Sir Walter. Okay, thank you, brother. Carol, Teddy go back bear. to the... Sharon uh, uh, was interested in that detox situation, that information, because there's some people out there who are interested in that as well. Uh, give, give us a process again. Uh, it's called Essence of Vitality, and I took it at the beginning of the year, and you go on it for two weeks. And you uh, drink a shot full in the morning and a shot full in the evening, and then you have a piece of orange or something behind it. And what it does is it cleanses your uh, system out, and it also changes your palate and gets rid of your um, desire for the fat to salt the Wow. Head. And in the process, you yeah, end no. up losing a lot of weight, at least 10 pounds, but it's called Essence of Vitality. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of uh, YouTube uh, videos out there on this product, but it's, it's very, very good. Hmm. But you can, you can Google and research other products if you want to, but mm -hmm. any kind of detox is really good in getting these toxins out of your body so you can change your eating habits and change your uh, palate. Wow. Essence uh, of, a, of vitality? Essence of vitality. Yeah. Essence of oh, vita wow. vitality. Man, That's good. my yeah. wife took that she won't want me no more because she likes fat. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
God, man. Oh, no. oh, my weight. Oh, oh. But it, it does. It does a lot for your health once you get all of this fat uh, off of you. And women have to be really careful with the di- uh, belly fat. Mm-hmm. When you have belly fat, it really increases your risk of breast cancer. Mm. Wow. So, bit oh, go. Yeah, yeah. Natalie Bullock says, I wish that as a youth, we knew how much uh, health matters. I watched one of my mm-hmm. best friends lose his life to heart failure, and it was it was weight and diabetes. Yeah, he stuff. lost the weight, but yeah. the but the damage was done. Yeah. And I and I know that there's a, there's that surgery that you guys do uh, the, the gastro bypass. Okay, bypass. okay. Bypass. now Didn't that done that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now that that surgery tends to uh, work on one guy different than it does the other guy. Because uh, I have two friends who've had that surgery. One did the surgery. He lost the weight. It stayed off. And then he got smaller and smaller. He started shrinking away. Mm. Okay. And then another one got it, got the surgery. And then shortly after that, he blew back up to the same size he was, if not bigger. Okay. Uh, and so, and I know there's two procedures. I think there's a lap, lap something. Well, it has progressively changed yeah. over the years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I had the surgery performed to me yeah. in 2002. Mm-hmm. And I lost over 100 pounds. Wow. My doctor told me I was losing too much weight. Too much. I, like a dummy, I listened. I switched wow. doctors since then, too. Sure. But I realized what happened is you can change your body, but you got to change your mind. Your mind. The diet. That's true. Absolutely. That's true. Diet. Your Absolutely. mindset. That's true. Yeah. So, Carol, it's, all, it's really, I think you said it earlier in the show. Of, it's, it's about the mind. Yes. It, it's a mind thing. You can put all of these other things in place. You can exercise. You can uh, change your diet. Mm-hmm. But after so long, if you have not changed your relationship with food in your mind, mm. if you have not uh, bought the case that I need to lose weight to live healthy so that I won't have stress, anxiety, so that I won't have all of this depression and have a heart attack. Until you come to terms in your mind and deal with the root cause of what got you to that place, you would get there again because it's only a challenge for some people to lose the weight to get to a certain point. They want to be in competition with themselves and say, yes, I can do this. But once you get to that end of your journey, what will your life look like? What have you decided that I'm going to change? What am I going to continue? Because people will put the weight back on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Shania Lashley, you know, I get y'all's names messed up, but, you know, y'all excuse me because y'all, your, your parents was calling you these names after trees and African. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> Making up names that couldn't spell. <laughs> Knowing they didn't finish school. So, so, you some names. so <laughs> I had a student named Roxanne, and she Roxanne. spelled her name as a compound word. Oh, my goodness. R-O-C-K-S-A-N-D. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, Char- Shania, I'm hoping I'm saying your name right. Please forgive me if I don't. But she says, I tend to avoid these controversial issues. She said, but Joe Hill is making some valid points. And I think Joe Hill is the one, he's, he's the one that talked about the, the preacher mm-hmm. and yeah. the look. Uh, he's, no. one, one thing he said, so, so he said, so if I'm drunk and preaching, you'd ignore me. But if I'm large and in charge, I'm legit. Or, or he says, a larger preacher with diabetes and high, high blood pressure having an altar call for healing. I don't hear anyone addressing the high rate of diabetes among blacks. Okay, now, 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 Joe, Joe, wow. be sweet. Yeah. Yeah, Joe Hill. Now, now, because there's so many of us that's sweet. <laughs> Sorry, Shania. No, she I said, know. watch it, Walt. <laughs> my bad. My bad. Um, I love you, girl. Uh, so, Joe, Joe was my, my, my dear Caucasian friend on Facebook. And, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't think he's 100% uh, white. I think, what is he? I, I think he's, what is he? I think he's like Obama. I think, I think he was born. Uh, he from Africa. And, 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 and right, I was about to ask that same <laughs> question. Yeah, I think he was Joe born Hill, in Africa. Joe Hill was, and he he's he fell in the paint bucket, a, a white paint bucket. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what about he, his hair though? His hair. Well, you know, hey, some you of y'all. Hair? Some of his, oh, okay. That's oh. Afro Sheen, brother. He no, just it no just was <laughs> <laughs> fashion fair. Okay. Uh, she yeah. said, "What's up with Al Sharpton?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Al Sharpton. <laughs> so, so Carol, with the three minutes that we have, I got uh, Davinia's coming in. Thank God she's here, and I wanted her to chime in uh, right on time. So, so uh, my brother man gonna have to give him his seat. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, let her uh, sit on your lap. We, yeah, yeah. Let, Boy, you yeah, gonna give me the you gonna, His wife is Santa Claus. 
in the <laughs> name of Jesus. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, to the issue of diabetes. Okay. Uh, throughout our whole conversation this evening, we just have not mentioned the word diabetes. Well, all of the issues that we talk about address fit into that whole diabetes, heart attack, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and all of these other type of problems. We just have not mentioned that word. Sure. And what was the other part of that question? Of 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 which question? Of Joe what, Hill. The one, Joe Hill. Joe Hill. Oh, yeah. Okay. He mentioned. Let me go to him again. He says a large a large preacher with diabetes and high blood pressure having an altar call for healing. He says, I don't hear anyone addressing the high rate of diabetes among blacks. So, so his question was about diabetes. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, pretty much. And then I think someone mentioned something about uh, uh, someone, a preacher being an alcoholic versus a preacher being obese. Yeah, he said that too. A drunk. I, I think that those, it's one of those things where it's still culturally acceptable to yeah. be obese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we mm -hmm. don't accept someone being an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. That's one of those things where you take a look at the various sins and you grade the sins and you say this is a big sin, that's a little sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the whole alcoholic issue is something that has been a no-no from since time. Yeah. But obesity is something that we're starting to address now. So I think... As we continue on this wave, I think we will start to look at an obese, obese pastor with a different eye. Mm -hmm. That is true. That's true. Yeah. Hey, uh, give us your, your website and your information, please. My website is OrganicSelfie.com. That's O-R-G as in George, A-N-I-C as in Charlie. S is in Sam, E-L-S as in Frank, I-E dot com. That's Organic selfie.com okay okay and that's where we can go and find all of the health tips that you have delivered to here on the show Absolutely. and more you can get your uh, a meal plan exercise tips with instructional uh, videos words of encouragement everything that we have talked about tonight is on organic selfie.com and it tells you when to eat how many times to eat the type of food you need to eat all of that because i know denisha talked about that earlier so you can either use her Project 10 uh, plan if you feel that you can't afford it at this time or what have you. I do have information that's free and available on my site as well. Great. Wow. Great. Carol, this Good has stuff. been one lovely hour with you. I'm so excited that you finally tuned in. And, and I think you told me uh, that this is your first time doing a radio show. Absolutely. It is. Oh, uh, let me mention this. This is very important sure. for people who want to know about uh, some of the different conditions that you are dealing with. Mm -hmm. You may want to take a look at the root cause of what uh, have you in that place. There is a book called A More Excellent Way to Better Health, mm -hmm. and it's by Henry W. Wright. It's A More Excellent Way to Be in Health by Henry W. Wright, and he, is a, uh, he brings it from a spiritual perspective. I love it. I love it. That's Carol, y'all, all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. If you're in Atlanta, you're listening right now. I have a very, I have a lot of Facebook friends down there. Y'all hook her up. Y'all got the website. Go on Spreaker.com right uh, tonight. I usually have the shows up before midnight every night, and go and replay this. Replay it. Um, I had um, our, our our dear Facebook friend uh, Mrs. Roll. Uh, Denisha Hemfield rolled at the first half hour and then now Carol Walker I'm just excited for all this wonderful information that we're throwing at you so that you can take it and um, and, and, and play it with in front of your children and your friends and, and, and keep rewinding because we really want our, our black uh, sisters to live long and healthy lives um, right. yeah we do um, and um, um, we're going to uh I, there's always a part two, three, and four to our shows, Alvin, as yes. he knows. And so we'll have Carol back to continue with this subject matter. Carol, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You are a dear friend, and we love you very it's much. Been excellent. <laughs> awesome. You did a great job. <laughs> we'll we'll tag you tonight on this uh, this post. All right, listen, y'all. We got to get to a break. Uh, Controversial corner is next. I'm going to let um, um, my dear friend, um, uh, what's her name? Just walked in. Davinia, I think that's her name. I can't remember. Um, she it's got the, a crown on it. She day. got a crown. Walter's <laughs> getting old. <laughs> We're going to let her loose. <laughs> and uh, we'll be right back. This is the Sir Walter Jones Show. <laughs> Log 
on to urbanbroadcastmedia.com and check out the many services Urban Broadcast Media provides. Whether it's social media, video production, radio broadcasting, or audio recording, we got you covered. The following show is paid programming and does not necessarily express the views and opinions of Urban Broadcast Media and its subsidiaries. Thank you for listening to UBM Praise. At this time, I have the honor to present to you the moral leader of our nation, a great, dedicated man, a philosopher of a nonviolent system of behavior in seeking to bring about social... Due to some violent content, parental discretion is advised. Politics. Doctrine. Current events. Let's meet at the Controversy Corner on the Sir Walter Jones Show here on UBM Prince. This is Keep It Real Carter at the intersection of controversy and obesity. It's crowded over here. Watch baby. a sucker. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're talking about a real delicate issue. Or delicacies. <laughs> Come on, everybody likes a little food. Somebody loves it a little more than you. Last week, we was talking about how thankful we were. But what we're really thankful, we excited about sinning. Because, come on, all of us. I was excited about sinning. See that? Well, we ain't, you nasty. We ain't talking about that kind of sinning. You still a newlywed. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> he trying to do controversy. That's points. fine. That's controversy enough for me. He ate many ways. Ah. <laughs> Sweet potato pie, dressing, chitterlings, and his. I'm sorry. Uh, Let me cake. Uh, that's what you call yourself. <laughs> now let's get back to the point, yes. people. There is a problem. We eat too much. Yes, we do. We eat all the time. Yes. We did a horrible job of eisegesis when we said, oh, taste and see. Taste don't mean eat it all. <laughs> After every service, there's a dinner sale. After every conference, there's a banquet. After every meeting. After every meeting, there's a snack. Either before the meeting, we have a what they call that continental breakfast. Then there's a brunch. Then there's another after lunch meeting. Whatever we do right now circulates around food. We need to learn to stop loving food and just like it a little bit. We have to learn that food is a tool and don't make a tool, a tool into a toy. We must learn, and I'm talking to myself right now, that we have to learn to live, eat to live and don't live to eat. I'm going to let the marinate for a minute. Eating leads to some things. You keep eating like you do. You know, that popcorn chicken and that popcorn flavored fries and popcorn shrimp. You're going to soon be popping pills. <laughs> we keep eating like we do. We're going to have blood pressure pills because we could not stand the pressure of resisting to eat the food. And we're going to have diabetes pills because you don't want to shoot no needle. Why? Because you can't find the vein because you're too fat. And Lord knows if you ever get the grudge, I mean the urge. Because <laughs> you know when you on your diet, you got a mean attitude. You get an urge. And if you're a man, you want to uh, actually go further. You got to pop a pill to finish that. Ain't that a shame? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. No. What are you trying to say? It's something that we need to consider. Now, here's another topic now. We have accepted obesity and rejected drug abuse, same sin on the same level. Alcoholism, we rejected a liar. I'm not saying that all those things should be accepted. What I'm saying is we need to, and quietly kept, we do reject the big person too. The big person has to be 10 times as better because they 10 times as large. Now that's another point. The big person has to be 10 times as prettier because they are 10 times as large. It's not fair either. Now, if your obesity is due to genetics, that's one thing. But if it's due to uh, kinetic, and I'm talking about kinetic energy, can I get that? Can I get a piece of that? Can I get some of that? Then we got a huge, huge problem. So what are you saying? You need to ask the Lord to deliver you from obesity. 
while you're praying for somebody to get you free from drugs, you need to get off your drug problem too. Drag yourself to the gym. And that's my controversial topic. Controversial Corner, right here on the Sir Wallace Jones Show. Monday through Friday. And my friends here. Look 4 at to 6 p.m. And he's skinty. Central. <laughs> right here. All these skinny people walking in here. Marlo Cribs walked in the door. Oh Our dear friend from Chicago. Hopefully Marlo can get on the show tomorrow. It's a music business show tomorrow. Yes, oh, from yeah. Four, from 4 to 6, and uh, we can get him going. Davinia is here in the room. She is also uh, a special, a dear friend of ours, and uh, she is also our special guest host every Tuesday on the Pink Perspective. Um, Why are you Divinia, always wearing black? Yeah, well, she, she's not in mourning. Oh. <laughs> Davinia, uh, they had you working like like a Hebrew slave at a job today. Okay, mm-hmm. all right, they did. Uh, yeah, and um, um, you know she usually do her. They do business meetings at, at, at after school on Tuesday, so she gets here around this time. Uh, but out of the two guests that we've had, we've talked on the natural. The Bible says it's not first natural, then spirit. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we, we worked on the natural aspects of the obesity in women. Now let's tackle the spirit. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's a spirit being. Um, we are tripart. Uh, we, we're b- body, soul, spirit. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's something possibly spiritually that is as that might be a dysfunctional aspect in our lives. Okay. That's causing us not to have uh, the fruit of the spirit of, of, uh, what is it? The, the patience. Mm-hmm. Okay. Temperance. Yeah. Temperance. That, is, that self, that self-control. Yeah. Okay. That's missing in some of us. Mm-hmm. What can you possibly say, uh, to the, our African American sisters out there to help them in that area? You know, Finding the root cause of why they're eating the way that they are. I would say a lot of times, you know, a lot of women are emotional eaters. I know that I myself struggle with being an emotional eater Mm -hmm. if I am stressed out, Mm -hmm. if I'm at the point where I'm in a terrible relationship and you eat for comfort. Yeah. You know, so unfortunately that comfort food (laughs) ends up making us very uncomfortable both spiritually and also naturally because... Because as we all know, you know, us black sisters, you know, we can get down on some soul food, you know, we get down on some, you know, you know, Hershey's sugar. It can be anything of that nature, you know, greens, cornbread, fried chicken, you know, things that are just soaked with pork and things of that nature, you know, so that tends to be our comfort food a lot of times or, you know, it's something that we can control It's something that helps us to feel better. But then the after effect of that tend to be detrimental with our health and then we're feeling bad about our appearance we're feeling bad about the fact that now we have to go to the doctor Mm -hmm. not feeling attractive anymore and then your husband or your significant other isn't attracted to you as well he just don't want to talk well (laughs) (laughs) you know so it tends to turn into a domino effect it really does you know but I would say that spiritually you know, I'm sorry, you were going to say something. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Continue. Yeah. So spiritually, all of those things really go into account. We have right. to find the issue for why. And this is just for the emotional eaters. Right. You know, why? What's the problem where you are resorting to having to eat to make yourself feel better? Mm. You know, it becomes like a, a coping mechanism. Mm-hmm. You know, if you get rid of the root cause of why you're eating the way that you are, then, of course, you get rid of the problem when it comes to your health you know you start to want to eat because hey i want to eat for health Mm. i want to eat not just because of the fact that it tastes good but then also i want to eat because it's good for me and then that tends to also reflect physically as well when you take care of the inside first wow wow hey turn her mic on (laughs) say 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 that again i said some of these women are going to be getting rid of a lot of men <laughs> i eat because wow. i'm happy wow <laughs> no wow. they're eating because they're getting on their nerves some yeah of them. sure 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 so so that there is a there is a relationship gap between woman and god apparently mm-hmm. because uh the women that a lot of the men that a lot of women are picking up 
mm-hmm. unfortunately, because mm-hmm. you know, if you look at a woman who's in is maybe thirty five, maybe forty, she'd already been through six men already. Depends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it does depend. But I've met so, so many of them. I'm yes. like, how could you have that many men and you're thirty five already? Well, well, how could you have that many mm-hmm. women? We in talking. We talking about okay. this women day. It's okay. pink day. Yes, yeah, pink okay. day. That was yeah. yesterday. Yeah, you had your chance. You had your that. chance. Okay, <laughs> you had your chance. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. You have to catch yeah. it. See right, the right, mm-hmm. right. So apparently, Write it down, save it for next there, week. there was a disconnect mm-hmm. with with a woman and her her. Cause there's a song called "A Lady, Her Lover, and Her Lord." Mm-hmm. All right, by by T D Jakes. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, she loves. Yeah. Herself. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there, th- those apparently, it became the lady, her lover. Mm-hmm. And maybe, maybe God later on. Mm-hmm. No, she okay. was just saying wow. Lord because of yeah. her lover. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, maybe. Yeah. Uh, so I think no I think Lord there's a <laughs> there's a right. Yeah, Lord, oh, Lord, help Lord, help me. Lord. Yeah, but it all started because yeah. he made us say Lord, Lord. Lord. Jesus, mm-hmm. Lord, mm-hmm. Jesus, Lord, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. have mercy. Yeah, yeah. So there's a disconnect. There needs to be a reconnect mm-hmm. with her and her Lord, so that the both of them could find a solution on the man. Mm-hmm. Okay. And she should be in a place where she could be found and not going out there chasing after her desire, you know, because she's miserable now from the last guy. Now mm-hmm. she tries to fill that void by going out to someone else. Mm-hmm. And then she don't find in him. And then she now she's back to crying in, in her room mm-hmm. because oh, she's getting ready to go back out there on the prowl. With that bowl of ice cream. But, too, there you go. It. And bonbons. Mm-hmm. Okay. So is she chasing? Yeah. Or she just walking? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, she, she do. <laughs> Them chips and dips. She, she, yeah. Too. yeah, she doing something. Yeah. So, so, so the, 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 the reconnect back to the Lord, her relationship. Yeah. And the thing is, is first of all, the first step to solving the problem is admitting that you have one. That's the very mm, first step. Mm. And then realizing that her body is in fact a temple mm. and yeah. that's where the Lord has to dwell and she has to start to respect her body yeah. as such. A and temple. that means Not in a conference center. Bingo. Yeah. Respect your yeah. respect. You know, and then what happens is once she gets that respect for herself mm-hmm. and she finds her confidence and mm-hmm. that true love that she really needs in Christ, mm-hmm. then from there she'll start to say, Well, you know what, I've got to get to my I have to get myself together. Yeah. You know, I have to start exercising, mm-hmm. I have to start treating my temple with the respect that God would want me to have for yeah. myself. Yeah. And when her confidence is found in Christ, when all of those things that she's lacking that she was looking for in the previous relationships and it failed. Wow. She finds that in Christ, then everything will start to fall back into order. Wow. 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 I like See, that. I that, like that. Yeah, that. Just, that, nice. yeah. that was smooth. It. Smooth. That just, it. Yeah. That could have summed it all up right there. Uh uh and there's there's a there's a there's a low self esteem issues going on among a, a black women, okay? And I know that's a new age term for many of you, but it still is an esteem issue going on. And it needs that somebody need to sit down with her and help her with this issue. But she can't talk to everybody and she can't even talk to some of her friends because they going through that same issue. So the blind is leading the blind. Mm. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and can I be quite honest with you Please. here? Because this is something that I struggled with, too. Mm-hmm. You know, most of the women in my family are thick. Okay. I mean, they are, they got a full set. Mine too. Okay. Yeah. And so what happened was with me struggling and being an emotional eater, I struggled with weight at one point too. And it's like black women tend to have it more hard because it's like, we want that buffy body where mm-hmm. it's like, you don't want to lose your thickness in mm-hmm. certain areas. You know, mm-hmm. you still want to keep the big booty and hips and everything else. Yeah. But when you start to <laughs> go a to Christian show. You can't say that. The big booty. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, are we going to keep I'm it saying, real? Are we going to keep it real? I'm keeping it real. And you have to use a vocabulary, darling. <laughs> this is an urban we, uh, show. Oh. Urban ain't got nothing so to do with it. It becomes a disconnect where what keeps a lot of black women out of the gym is like, okay, well, I don't want a flat butt. You know, oh, no. I don't want, you know, to have to deal with losing so much weight to now. I'm unattracted to my man now at the size and the weight that I am. But then if I lose all of that. You'll I'm really be, be unattractive. Exactly. Unattractive. Because then, okay. you know, so. Now, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't, I'm going to be the, the combatant here. I have seen <laughs> many, many of over of, of thick women mm-hmm. who have no self-esteem issues. In fact, Shelly said on here, God to be, I mean, y'all were talking about being healthy, not skinny. But said just threw out a point. Sometimes women get pregnant. And they never lose the weight they gain from the pregnancy. Well, we said that earlier. Oh, yeah, we oh. talked about that. Oh, yeah. I wasn't here. Johnny, come lately. Okay. 
Lisa came at all. But I want I want to really address that that sometimes um, we have to make sure that we're comfortable in the skin we're in, no matter That's how. Very true. That's the number one. Thing. Yeah. How. Uh, how expanded the skin may be. Yeah. yeah. Um, Very because true. sometimes you can have a healthy body and an unhealthy mind as a result of trying to make sure that your body got healthy, that you still lost your self image wow. and your purpose. Very oh. true. That that's, <laughs> that's that's the truth. You got it right there. And not only that, but skinny doesn't equal healthy. No, it doesn't. Nor no. does being we said that too. Yeah. Nor does being, you know, a certain size mean that you're unhealthy. Yeah. Because I also know that women are pleasers by nature. When they really know they got somebody, they will try to please them. Is this what he wants? Is that what he wants? Mm-hmm. And if they get the idea, they'll lose weight to please that man. And they lose themselves and their identity in it. Yeah, Very true. and that's wrong. That's what I asked the the caller earlier. Did she, was she losing the weight because she wanted to lose the weight, or was she losing it for someone else? That's good mm-hmm. because you know you don't want to go. I'm, I'm not going to lose no weight for no one else. I'm going right. to lose it for me. For me, it's about me at that moment. Mm-hmm. About my health. About what's going on with me. Yeah, yeah. Carol Carol Younger uh, Walker's on the on Facebook now. She says, "Sir Walter, you can be healthy." Toned and have an attractive butt. I like her. I, yes, <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Well, I can't see mine. You can't see yours. I ain't that's do, true. And you you nobody in this room seen theirs either. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's good stuff. Uh, Minister Shelley Covington. That's another one of our friends from uh, uh, Indianapolis. She said six years ago, my BMI and percentage body fat were both close to fifty percent. Today, my, my, my her BMI is twenty seven percent, and my percentage of body fat is twenty nine percent. Still got my black girl figure. Why are you talking about BMI? That's yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, hip styles and that other thing. Yeah, yeah. BMI is tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> that this sure is. And we <laughs> just and and also too, we just said earlier. We were just uh, uh, talking earlier uh, on commercial time mm-hmm. that uh, a lot of us, especially black women, our fat is not fat some of it is a lot of muscle muscle mm-hmm. and when we get on a scale we might have lost weight but we yeah. get on a scale but it has turned into muscle muscle, yeah. muscle, is, and so muscle is much heavier than fat so don't think oh i'm just oh i didn't gain weight no you just gained muscle you have to look at flabby. progress and not the scale exactly yeah, yeah. Exactly. Progress. yeah. Progress. But still how you it. feel yeah, that is true. really how you feel. Yeah. 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 The uh, article that if you have heard the soundbite at the half hour of this show, it's from the New York Times, uh, a woman, uh, it, it was called Black Women Want to Be Fat. It says, in case you've been napping from the fatigue, beating right. a dead horse. <laughs> okay. And we give each other that look. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> she says here, what, what we need is a body culture revolution in black America. She says, why? Because too many experts who are involved in this discussion of obesity don't understand something crucial about black women and fat. Many black women are fat because we want to be. Randa writes, and then she further says, how many white girls in the 60s grew up praying for fat thighs? I know I did. I asked God to give me big thighs like my dancing teacher, Diane. There was no way I wanted to look like Twiggy, the white model whose boy like build was the dream of white girls. I remember Twiggy in the 60s, not with Joe Tex ringing in my ear. So her 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 testimony is is not vast. amount. Well, let's say there's a percentage of women who are like her mm-hmm. who did want. I, I remember being a boy and, and then my, my skinny girlfriend wanted some fat on her mm-hmm. and then it just got out of control. Yeah. Okay. So when you look at your high school pictures, you see how small everybody is. Yeah. Now look at them. A lot of them are obese. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So something I, happened. That's true. Cause I had a friend, she wanted to gain weight. She was just eating up everything, yeah. trying to gain weight. And she mm-hmm. just had her metabolism. was yeah. just She just wouldn't gain weight. And she struggled with that for a long time until she just, said you know what i'm just gonna be me yeah mm-hmm. I just, just gave just up settled. on it like forget it they just settled it's like the job search that when they always do this every how many what, what how many quarters they do when they do the, they give out the job stats in america i think what is every four quarters or something every, like that? yeah four three times quarters a year. or something like that four times a year, yeah. yeah yeah and and they says that you can't trust their stats that much because some people have gave given up mm-hmm. on searching for jobs yes mm-hmm. so you can't you it's hard to count them in so yes. it's not actual yeah. nor factual they, they, mm-hmm. come on now Mm-hmm. It's just data yeah. that's applied. Yes, yeah. that is applied. Mm-hmm. So there are a lot of women out there who are obese, they, and, and some they just gave up. 
Yeah. And I'm 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 fine with the way I am. Yeah. Now some use it as an excuse to say they they're fine, but they really want to be small. They just feel like I'm tired of fighting y'all mm-hmm. and, and fighting myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna just be who I am. Because that is a struggle. It is fighting a struggle. yourself, yeah. trying to lose weight. It just runs in you the running, family. You run You yeah. you look. You on the on the uh, treadmill running like you're crazy, mm-hmm. sweating, and it's, mm-hmm. and still a month, two months later, you haven't lost one Kept pound. You eating better. You doing yeah. everything, but you haven't lost one pound. Yeah. That will be discouraged you're giving up yeah. it runs in the family and that's the yeah. problem ain't yeah. nobody in your family running yeah <laughs> yeah yeah uh <laughs> yeah last comment we're going to the hymn of the day uh carol walker says uh, some black women prefer to be larger but some large women say uh they want uh they want to be large because they want they don't believe they can lose the weight and she says but you can Okay, so uh, again, it's a, it's a more about it's about I'm acceptance of what I am. Yes, and I move on to something else in my life. What what's the hymn of the day, man? For all of you that struggle with who you are, how you look, how you feel, oh, it's wow. all about love. <laughs> it's all about love. Mm. TKO. <laughs> so just let it go, and accept the fact that. Yeah, that's too high for you. Yes, Jesus loves us. Okay, can you lower it? Sure. Too high. Oh, the volume too high. No, no, no. Thank you. Because I want Sharon to sing. She, oh, she sing the song. She, you know, she working on a, a project, man. We need really? to get him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sing the song, anime. anime. Come on, anime. You, you look just like Tina, too. Anime is going to sing. All right. <laughs> yes. No. Jesus loves oh. you. This we know. All right. For, For the, the Bible tells me so. Yes. Mm-hmm. Little ones, big ones, skinny ones, all ones. <laughs> they to him belong. <laughs> they are weak, but he is strong. Yeah, Everybody. Man. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. (laughs) (laughs) For the Bible tells you better sing, Leotine. Me, me, me. Thank you very much. Thank you very Sharon much. Sharon Well, everybody. Say so beautiful, don't Say you? Say so beautiful, don't you? That's, uh, that's Seti Bear's wife. Pray for him. Bishop Seti Bear. The Bishop Seti Bear. Just having fun. Just having fun. Oh. Step down to Temple Church of God in Christ. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You know, when you create things, you often look at your product and say, "Why? What was I thinking?" <laughs> you sound like God. <laughs> oh wow! I feel like repenting like God. for creating Ooh. the Sir Walter Jones show. <laughs> I have repented that I've made man. Uh, listen, y'all out there. I hope and pray to God that this information wow, that reached your heart and your mind. Um, and again. Um, uh, Rewind this. It's on speaker. Rewind yes. it and play it yes. over and over again, and give it to your friends. Even when you're fasting. Even when, yeah, even when you're fasting. Mm-hmm. You yeah, you yeah. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And but we gotta always remember there, there, there should be a always be a spiritual connect that we have with the Maker, the Creator. Okay, as the vineyard as, uh, aptly, wonderfully uh, stated here, there, there's got to be a confidence that yes. all you African American women out there, especially, you have in yourself. You don't really need a man to make you feel uh, like a woman. Yeah. That's right. You just don't. Exactly. No, Say you to don't. Him. You express, make me e- expound on that. Your you got, confidence has got to be found in Christ, mm-hmm. not a man. man. Uh, yeah, man. that's true. Yeah. It's as simple as that. You are fearfully man. and wonderfully made. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's yeah. That's yeah. Right. So when you wake up in the morning. You look at your body, you look at your your hair, cosmetics, all that stuff, and you say to yourself, I like what I look like. No, you say to yourself, well, I say to myself, uh-huh. 
girl, you gorgeous. Go, go on, go on, Ta-da. go on. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Talk to your name you with Sharice. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's gorgeous. I love Sharon. what I look like. Yeah. <laughs> my my yeah. favorite um, quote, it, mm. one of my favorite quotes anyway, is that if you live for man's opinions, you'll die to the criticism. Oh, oh wow. wow. I read I that. Like I read that, that somewhere. Good. That's good, though. That, that is good stuff. Indeed. You'll die, you'll die to criticism. criticism. you die to criticism. Live me. So you got to get it right. Come on, Bob. So you got to get it right. You're going to sleep tight at night. Yeah, especially for clothes, Saul. <laughs> <laughs> then gain weight, can't fit your clothes. Right. <laughs> it don't matter, you don't care what no man think. They ain't loose no more. <laughs> Take them to the tailor and let them out at what? the scene. What, Sharon? What? <laughs> <laughs> ain't loose no more. You are fired. I ain't even hired you yet. <laughs> ain't loose no more. That's the song. <laughs> ain't loose no more. Ain't, ain't loose, loose no, no more. more. <laughs> That's the new woman's conference. I, I almost, you ain't loose no more, but come on here, fat women. I said something. <laughs> you ain't loose no more. <laughs> God done drew it up. It got tight again. You done got him started. I got sh- shut that man's <laughs> mic off now. Oh my shut God. it off. This Woo! is a Christian station. Shut it no. down. What? What? Y'all say it. <laughs> discretion is advised. You see the, the white man talking. <laughs> you guys just said. Uh, booty yeah, <laughs> you see there, and y'all she did. Yeah. She said and you're talking about me. She ain't loose no more. She ain't loose no more. I ain't yeah. loose no more. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> my clothes are tight. <laughs> somebody hit you. Somebody hit you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. My clothes are tight. Listen, y'all. I gotta get out of here. I gotta, fitting, fitting, fitting. I gotta get out of here. This 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 is a portion I'm gonna have to edit out. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, yeah, I got I got to edit this portion out. I got to edit this portion out. Mm. Oh, these are you, you know, moments. yeah. I, I will say that some people think that Christians are boring uh, until they oh, no. they start listening to my show. I ain't no Christian. I'm saying, <laughs> and and they realize not we're not Christian. We're not boring at all. Not, not at a Christian. Not, we're not at all. We're, we're a boring. lot of fun. I am we are not to be insulted. I am not to live by yeah. man's criticisms. <laughs> I am not a Christian. <laughs> I'm not a Christian. I'm delivered. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm saved. With a a little, follower of Christ. With believer added to that. Da, yeah. da, da, there you go. Da, da. Well, I'm of the body of Christ, <laughs> and I and I love it. Yes, love it. it's a wonderful part to be wonderful yeah. to be a part of. It, it yes, is. It is. Yes, it is. Sharon, thank you so much for coming in. Yes, oh, I appreciate thank you. Breath of fresh air. Yes, just a breath of fresh air. Please come Fun. back. Please come back tomorrow. Oh, I'll be back, be back, back tomorrow. They put put a, a muzzle on your husband's ears and mouth, <laughs> and be back tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay, forget what. Disobey your husband right now. And come back tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> I've been, Ooh, yes, my study Thank you, man. Me. Oh, my pleasure. For allowing the kids to keep you after school, but uh, uh, releasing you when they can. Well, it's uh, almost over. It's almost yeah, it's over. It's almost over. Now, I got to December left. Ain't got a couple weeks left. <laughs> Lord. Yeah, praise the Lord. Divinia. So that means. Oh, that's right. You seasonal too, right? Yes. Okay, then we'll have you more often. Uh, when you uh, you know she comes on Tuesdays, but we're gonna have to sneak her in on a on a Thursday or Friday. Oh yes. Uh, Thursday we've got uh, Eric Jewel Hayes will come be coming in, and he'll be talking about creation versus evolution. Ah, uh, yes. And then wonderful discussion. yes, and then Friday Apostle David Rogers, uh, and we will have Ooh, an attorney. High octane. Yeah, we'll have an attorney coming in, and we'll be talking about uh, black finances. How can the African Americans put our finances together? To, to uh, change the world um, And so that's Friday So you do not want to miss this week of the Sir Walter Jones show uh, Tomorrow we have Jasmine remain on the show And she'll be talking about the struggles of the biz- music business Okay So this is going to be a crazy, crazy, crazy week Alright, so you want to tune in Go to Spreaker right now All the shows are up And, and we, uh, we're doing our thing Okay all right, y'all, make us the number one hit on UBM Praise because that's where we are now. I want my Stella and my daddy's records. Yes, sir. It's yours. This is the hey. Sir Walter Jones oh, show. Oh, oh. <laughs> the dinner. Let's go get some food. <laughs> Turkey's chicken. <laughs> Fried collard greens. With butter and lard. All that talking. All that talking we're going out to eat right now. Oh yeah. Dinner on me.
You've been listening to the Sir Walter Jones Radio Show, where he provides you with the biblical perspective for your everyday life. Stay connected to Sir Walter Jones by visiting him online at www.sirwalterjones.com or on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash The Sir Walter Jones Show. Stay tuned until next time with The Sir Walter Jones Show with Sir Walter Jones.